In this video, we're going to be making our buildings cost resources and making this building button get grayed out if we don't have enough resources. So I'm just going to open the building script up, the building button as well. This takes a little bit. Okay, so I've changed my theme a little bit. It just makes it a little bit more high contrast. I'm also going to open up the building script as well, and then open up the resource script as well. So, we're going to make this a public static int. Static int, not int static, although static int. This will allow this to be accessed from anywhere as long as we reference the script. So, whenever we, before we destroy the building, we want to do resources dot correct resources minus equals the cost. This will essentially subtract the cost, well, it will subtract the current resources from the cost. I don't know if I worded that correctly, but anyways, once we build it, if we have, let's say, 500 resources, and this building is 100 resources, our, our new resource amount will be 400. And then in our building button, we're going to also create a reference to the cost, public int cost. We'll make this a little cleaner down the line probably in the next video because right now we're doing the same thing twice. This is not inefficient and it makes bad practices later down the line. Anyways, we're also going to have to import using Unity Engine. UI. This will allow us to access the button, Unity's compile link. If you want to, you could place all your script in a assembly here just to increase compiling times and so it doesn't also have to compile text mesh pro stuff. But anyways, we want to be able to access this button, so we're going to have to create a reference to it. This can be a private variable, which is essentially just a cached variable. I'm going to make it a private button and call it, let's just say, self self is not a reserved keyword which is odd but in our wake function we can just say self is equal to get component button and then that will cache it and then in our update function this is probably not the most this is probably the most inefficient way to do this again we'll most likely not be fixing this later down the line but for now it will so in our wake function we're getting this button here in this one we have to make an if statement and do if resources not resolution if resources dot current resources is greater than the cost because we want to have some resources left over and then we can say self dot interactable is equal to true else self dot interactable is equal to false now you don't want to make too many if else statements because that often results in nasty code but for now if it's just one if statement it, then it works let me just take a sip of water here for a second okay so essentially what this line is doing here is getting the button on our building button here we already have the script sitting on the button so we don't have to assign it this one is getting the interactable value on our button so let me just go into 2d mode here and dock the game over there and then i can go into the game info canvas building panel building one button watch the button as i click this check mark so as i unclick this check mark the button turns gray and once i click it it becomes the standard color so interactable is essentially telling if the user can click on it not interactable means the user can't click on it so you could also change the colors if you want to i'm just going to leave it at default for now just because I don't have a reason to change it. Okay, so whenever I press start here, let Unity compile it, go into our building tab. Okay, so we can see no building or no resources getting subtracted. That is just a tad odd. And it's because we're doing it in our fixed update. I'm actually just going to move that code to the update function. Again, this is inefficient and you should probably put this in like a coroutine or something, but for now this works. Okay, and in our building ghost, it's subtracting cost. We forgot to assign a cost when we made the prefab. So I'm going to have to assign that cost real quickly. Buildings, building, building ghost. I'm just going to make it 250. I believe that is half of 500. And then we should see it update as I place it. And once it goes to zero, our building button gets sprayed out. I'm actually going to set this 
to the same cost so to 50 like this and then we can press play again and then once we place one it goes out because we have precisely 250 resources which means if we were to build another one our resources would drop to zero the way to fix this is to go into your code and just add an equal sign here i did talk about this earlier but if you want your user to be able to have zero resources then you can just take this code here okay i'm gonna go back in unity and then we should see that we are able to drop to zero but not less than zero because we're not able to build so i can go to the building here place it down place it down and then boom our resources are zero all right one last thing before this tutorial ends is we're going to be organizing our project structure a little bit I'm actually going to close out Visual Studio because it gets in the way when you're organizing your project. So we want to take some of these related scripts here and move them into their own folders. Folders, I mean. I'm just going to type in building script here. Move the building, both building scripts into there. The building ghost and I believe the, what is the other building script? The building button. Yes, the building button. Okay, and then we probably also want to create another folder for game management, game management, and just move the resources into there. And then we probably also want another script for just basic gameplay, so game, gameplay. And this is just going to contain our camera script, and I'm probably also going to create another folder for just some utilities. Every time you move a script to a new folder, it reloads, that can get a little annoying but you just have to deal with it. So I'm going to move the utils script into the utilities folder, let Unity compile, do its thing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, Unity's yelling at me to download Visual Studio Editor package version 2.0. I'm actually going to download that just so it stops yelling at me. So you can go to Window Package Manager and go to Unity Registry. Well, actually, you have to go in project because it's already installed, and then you can update it. I'm going to take a sip of water. Okay, so now Unity is no longer yelling at us, and this video is coming to an end. So be sure to stay tuned for, I believe this is episode 5. So stay tuned for episode 6, where we're going to be cleaning up some of this code just to make it a little easier. We'll probably also convert some variables into scriptable objects, which makes it easier to add new things to our game. But for now, this is all. Funnuber, out.